her chest was so heavy. We welcome everyone. It's good to see all of you with us this morning. We welcome you on this day, the ninth day of August 2020. We welcome each and every one and glad to see all who are here with us. And we welcome all who are online and who are listening to us and looking at us as well. We welcome you as well. I hope each and every one is doing wonderful. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship. Hymn number 261, Wonderful Words of Life, and our opening prayer. <laughs> sing a song like this. And Father, knowing, knowing that the word that we're talking about comes from the gospel, comes from the Holy Bible. And Lord, the promises that it gives to us, the salvation that it lets us be aware of, knowing that we trust in you, put our life in your hands, that Father, we will have eternal life. I thank you for each one that's here this morning. I pray that you be with those that aren't able to be here for whatever the reason might be, whether sickness or work or whatever. But bless, take charge of your service, God direct us all. In that such precious name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. In the way of announcements, just a few things uh, we need to be aware of. Again, the St. Tammany Public School System hopefully will be starting. Uh, sometime in the middle of September, a tentative that may change, so be aware of that. Um, <clears throat> as of right now, we're not going to have Sunday school anytime soon. I think we're going to wait another three more months maybe and see what happens with, uh, with all of this that's going on. However, um, now Ms. Renee will be having Little Church for anyone that would like to bring little ones. Uh, for Little Church back in the back in her classroom, this nice big area, so she's put up uh, configurations different as well, so uh, helping out as far as with that, separating the kids or keeping them um, safe distance or doing whatever. Um, so if you feel compelled and if you would like to bring um, the little kids for Little Church, that will be happening from 1030 
to 11.30, the same time as morning service. That will be in the back uh, if you would like to do that, so keep that in mind. Uh, Wednesday night, the ladies do meet in the kitchen uh, for Bible study, and again, that's social distancing also they, to some extent, and um, uh, so the kitchen is fairly large to where they are. Uh, and that starts at 6.30, hopefully promptly. Um, but you know how it happens when you get a whole bunch of women together, they all start at 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I had to. I can't help it. <laughs> She'll get me later. Getting down. Don't tell me that's why I'm going in the summer And that's okay. It may it may it may end at quarter to eight, ten minutes to eight. Eight o'clock. <laughs> But that's okay. But they have it on Wednesday night, so all the ladies who would like to come, you can you can come uh, at 6.30 and do it. Find us on Facebook and also on YouTube um, as well. Any other announcements, anything else we need to be aware of, of anything else going on? Uh, let me just mention this coming week coming up um, that there are a few things that you may want to be aware of. Uh, today, I want to wish Clarence, Clarence's birthday today, Clarence Poe's birthday is today, so wish him a happy birthday today. Um, Tuesday is Janet's birthday, and then Wednesday is Renee's birthday. She's in the back. And her daughter-in-law, Laura's birthday. They're both on the same day, the 12th of August as well. So this week coming up, we have a few birthdays uh, that are happening as far as, far as this week. So, uh, so be aware of all that's, of this that's going on here. Um, and be aware that we're still in the same phase two with this COVID-19 uh, situation as well. Let's continue as Al now leads us in another hymn, hymn number 429, All That Thrills My Soul.
questions. We have a few prayers and requests and concerns. I'd ask you to continue to pray and to remember different ones on our prayer list that we continue to pray for. Again, all Christian missionaries throughout the land, regardless of denomination, pray for them. Military personnel, whomever, you know, all branches and all people in the military, especially those who are away from their wives, say, in another, deployed in another country or whether, whatever, but remember them in prayer. Uh, pray for all the nursing homes, many, many people that are there and still are not receiving visitors, so pray for nursing home patients as well as the staff and the people working in the nursing homes uh, as well. Of course, pray for those in hospitals and also the many uh, staff and the many people attending to others as well um, that are dealing with that. Uh, just on our list, just, just a few people we want to just make mention and known. Um, of course, continue to pray for Nicole Porter. Uh, she is at home right now for a while with her mom, Anita. So just pray for her as she is there, but still um, dealing with the leukemia. Um, and, um, and I think still has more treatments and more uh, things to come as far as with her. So do pray for her as well as the family uh, with her cancer and what she's dealing with. Of course, Johnny Garrett Jr. Continue to remember Johnny in prayer and uh, his treatments and what he deals with. And of course, his wife Debbie as well as well as Debbie's mom and sister in Kentucky, remember them in prayer, um, and others also. Uh, again, we just want to continue to pray for. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us, Linda. I'd like to lift Mark up in prayer with all the yes. problems that he's having right. since January, February. Okay. okay. operation or, or the procedure done until the 20th of this month. So we need to pray for Tracy because uh, he can only walk so far and he gets real tired because he's a nafib. So he, he really can't do much of anything. Uh, from what Karen tells me, he just stays at home because there's nothing he can do. He has no energy, none, zero. Uh, you know, get from the kitchen just to live, just to the sofa, takes everything out of him because he's in, he, he's in nafib and so uh, until they fix the problem, he's basically, I think, staying at home. And um, so, I just pray for Tracy on the 20th of August. They'll do that procedure for him. So, just remember him in prayer. Others, Mr. Billy. Keep Barbara in, in our prayer. Okay. She still has a terrible time with that uh, brain. Yeah. Deal and okay. Problem with her blood. And wow. Okay. And okay. All right. All right, so remember Barbara in prayer, that, that, is Mr., that is 
that is his sister lost, and that's Lawrence's wife, so remember Barbara in prayer. And pray for your other family members as well, you know, that are dealing with, yeah, yeah, so deal with the other ones too, so yes, and, and a prayer of Thanksgiving, I'm glad you're doing better, and you're back with us as well, so that, that's good. Um, and he said, he said he's got like 70, ga 70 gallons of honey, huh? That's what Lawrence said. Lawrence said he got a whole bunch of honey. So yes, he said he worked a whole bunch yesterday, all of them did. <laughs> so, he said he might be getting too old to do it. Is that, is that what you told me? Is that what Lauren said? <laughs> I said, nah, you'll be fine. So just pray for them and remember the, his family, remember them in prayer um, as well with, with all that they go through as well. Other prayer requests, concerns, and, and Ms. Brandy. For those of y'all who don't know, my mom and I are both taking big, big tests by December. We have started studying our butts off. Both of us still have butts, but we're, we're working there. <laughs> and I just like pray that we actually pass our tests. We'll do. And that my poor mom doesn't explode <laughs> when she opens the book about notary again. We'll, we'll keep both of y'all okay. in sure. Yes. Others. Again, just pray for each other. Pray for those who are maybe dealing with different health issues or health problems other than the COVID-19. Uh, there are, you know, people out there that are dealing with other things, and now, uh, you know, hospitals and doctors, you know, they're treating people now uh, with it as far as, as far as with everything. So, just just remember the different people. Uh, traveling mercies for any and all who will and are be will be traveling as far as this week. Uh, just pray for that. And as always, pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That is the main thing that we need to pray for for anyone and anybody uh, concerning for all eternity. Pray for their soul. Pray for their salvation. Um, that they may come to know Jesus Christ. As a Lord and Savior, whomever they may be, a friend, a family member, a co-worker, even a stranger. Just, just, just pray for salvation. Uh, and, and just pray for each other. Again, pray for those who are now with us and pray for those who are having problems, whether at work, at home, or within themselves. Just, just pray for different ones. And keep each other in prayer during the course of the week as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, as we come before you again, Lord, we lift up all these prayers, all the concerns, the many that have been voiced and the many unspoken as well. We lift them all up before your throne and ask for your grace and for your mercy and for your favor. We pray, Lord, where there is sickness, we pray for healing. We pray for grace and mercy upon each and every one. Where there are problems or things that are going on either with the family or at work, and even the battles we have within ourselves, we pray for your help and for your strength and for your guidance in each and every one for help in light of all that is going on within each and every one. So be with us there. We pray for those who are traveling or will be traveling. Watch over them and help them and be with them as well. Lord, we pray for our country. We pray for all that is going on throughout not only our country, but throughout the world with this COVID-19. And we pray, Lord, for your help, grace, and mercy upon all that is happening and all that is taking place as well. And Lord, we especially pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, whomever they may be. We pray for their soul. And again, Lord, we pray for the many spoken prayers and many spoken things that have been spoken of this morning. Reader with her problem that she is having, and our sister pray for her as well as for Jean. Again, we lift up Johnny Garrett Jr. with his uh, battle with his cancer. We lift up Nicole with her battle with her cancer. We pray for those in the nursing homes, the many who are in the nursing homes and cannot receive uh, uh, visitors, and we pray for them as well as the staff and the people working in the nursing home as well. And Lord, be with us. Watch over us and help us. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Let us stand at this time as Al comes again and leads us in our offertory hymn.
521 on Jordan's Stormy Banks. <laughs> testimony of, again, of, of what and who we are because of Jesus Christ. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever man may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus. 
us there today. He walks with us and talks with us all life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart goes weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within your heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs. To Jesus Christ our King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with us and talks with us all our life's narrow way. He lives, He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. And again, I hope that Jesus lives in your heart. Because it is he who enables us to do all things. Today, if you have your Bible, turn, if you will, to probably a familiar passage to many. Luke chapter 8, and in verses 1 through 15, the parable of the sower. First, let me read as an introduction the parable that Jesus here so gives to the people. And then later we'll see the explanation that he gives in verses 11 through 15. Starting in verse 1 of Luke chapter 8, he says, After this, Jesus traveled about and went from town and village in order to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and some, and some of the women who were cured uh, of many things and won the evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons have come out, Joanna, the wife of Cuz the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and of course, many other women. Now, these women were helping to support them out of their own means. Meanwhile, while a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told them this parable. Once there was a farmer. He went out to sow seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and it was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and when it came up, the plant withered because it had no moisture. Other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and it yielded a crop of a hundred times more than was sown. When he had said this, he called out, he who has an ear, let him hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. And he said to his disciples, The knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. Now according to Matthew's account, of the same parable of the sower in chapter 13, Jesus 
He was by the shore of Galilee, and a large crowd of people was there. And so, in order to teach them, he got into the boat to teach these large crowds of people that came to hear them, and he started teaching them the God's Word. Now, again, as we mentioned, and as is mentioned here, Jesus often spoke to parables, in parables, to the crowds of people, but later he would explain it only to his disciples. Uh, and, he, and he explained it to his disciples, and they had been given the mystery of the kingdom of God. Well, guess what? So have we. We now have been given the mystery of the kingdom of God as well, of what is all about and what has taken place. Now, in this particular parable, is it possible that this gives us the answer that throughout redemptive history, most people have rejected, why most people have rejected the gospel, or rejected Jesus Christ as the Son of God or as the redemptive way? Now it's clear, the issue here is not the gospel matter itself. Understand that. It is not the skill. It is not the methodology of anyone proclaiming the word. We're all to go out and proclaim the word. But it looks like the determining factor is the condition of the hearer's heart. What's here? What goes in here? You know, the, the Proverbs in the Old Testament, Word of God, tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, and in verse 20 and following, it says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are the life of those who find it and the health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart. As it says, guard your heart. Why? For it is the wellspring of life. And then also, Jesus, in the Gospel of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 15, in verse 17 and following, he too described this to his, um, to his disciples concerning the heart. And it's very important we understand this as well. But he told this to his disciples and explained to them concerning this in Matthew chapter 15, in verse 17 and following. As he told him, he said, do not see that whatever enters the mouth and goes in the stomach and comes out the body. But the things that come out of the mouth come from where? From the heart. See, it comes out of the heart. And these make a man unclean, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are these are what these are what makes a man unclean, but eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean, but which comes out of the heart, and that's what man speaks. So today, let us look at this familiar passage and the explanation that Jesus so gives here in verses 11 through 15. The farmer here, of course, in this parable, is Jesus, as he is sowing a seed. But understand, later, after Jesus' resurrection, he tells them to go out and spread the gospel. Later, all of us become farmers. We are to sow seed. We are to give out the word to everyone and to all people. So the farmer, in this case, is Jesus. But later, the farmer, we become farmers. Even though we probably live in the city and never farmed a day in our life. We become farmers. We start sowing the seed of the word of God. And we give it to people. The birds here, as he says in the first one, is probably the devil and his and, and or his workers that take it away. And as you see, and as we've read, there are four different kinds of soil, which represents four different kinds, uh, types of hearts. Yet out of this, only one produces a crop or produces fruit from these. So the first one, notice in verse 12, concerning it as he gives this the meaning of it, from verse 5, the farmer went out and he sold the seed and as he scattered the seed, some of the birds, and some fell along the path and it trampled on the birds, ate it up. This is the hard soil. This is the hard heart. The heart that is hard. And notice Jesus, as he says the meaning of it in verse 12. These 
those along the path are the ones who hear, and I want you to notice that in every one, they all heard the word of God. It's, like, it's not like they were deaf and they didn't hear it. They heard the word of God, so that without a huge when they stand before God and said, well, I never heard it. They all heard the word of God. And then, what happens? The devil comes and takes away the word from where? Their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. See, this soul again represents the person, again, as I mentioned, they hear the word, but immediately they allow Satan or the devil to snatch the seed away from them. Now, how did this happen? How did, they, how did this heart become so hard? Sin. Because of sin. And I know every, all of sin falls short of the glory of God. But the problem comes in is that they have never repented of sin. They never allow Jesus to come into their hearts and in their lives. So their hearts are hardened. They become hard. They have rejected not only God's word, but they have rejected God's gift to them, his son. They have rejected it. And now all of this was due because they love sin more than the things of God and God's word. They become hard-hearted. Stiff neck. I think Stephen said it correctly. When, the, when his fellow Jews brought Stephen up on charges and they were accusing him, and before they stoned him to death, he gave him a dissertation. You, and you'd have to go back and read it over in Acts chapter 7. It's an awesome uh, chapter of 7, and it just shows how hard hearted and stiff necked his fellow Jews, religious people now, were concerning Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And, and, and Stephen put it, put it quite clearly in, in Acts chapter 7 and verse 51. Notice he, what he says concerning his own people, the Jewish people. He says, you stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, both. You are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet, watch this, your fathers did not persecute. They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And who is the righteous one? Jesus Christ. He came. And notice what he says, and you have betrayed and murdered him. In other words, you put him on the cross. You did this. You've rejected the one that God has sent. And so you have received a law that was put into effect through the angels, but you have not obeyed it. And why not? Because you're hard-hearted, stiff-necked, uncircumcised in the, on the heart. You see? And again, we're not talking not necessarily about people who are atheists or whatever the case may be, or even under, we're talking about highly and seriously religious people in some cases who basically have rejected Jesus Christ. Your prime examples uh, of it, not only with Stephen, but even Jesus uh, and what he gave us uh, in his day as well, the same Jewish people that killed him and the same ones that probably that Stephen was talking to as well, Jesus says this about them in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 27 and 28. And just some of the woes, he says, Woe to you teachers of the law and you Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs. You look beautiful on the outside, <coughs> but inside full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, full of hypocrisy and wickedness. And why? The heart. The heart. Hard hearted. Heart has never been changed concerning it. And then later on, Jesus, again, he relates to his disciples in John chapter 8, and in verse 43 and following, here he relates to them concerning these same Jews, or he talks about these same Jews as he, I'm sorry, as he talks to this Jewish people because they accuse him of one thing. And notice what he says about them. Now, these are religious people. Jesus said to these 
religious people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the leaders, he says, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now I am here. I have not come on my own, but I have sent me. Well, why is my language not clear to you? Now, why didn't they hear him? Why? Because you are unable to hear what I say. Why? Because you belong to your father, the devil. See, Satan has come along and snatched the word away from him, just as he said. And you want to carry out your father's desires. So who is their father? He's saying, telling them, your father is Satan because you have rejected me, whom God has sent. And by rejecting me, you've also rejected God the Father. He was a murderer from the beginning, and, holding, and not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks in his native tongue, for he is a liar and a father of lies. Yet because I take you the truth, you do not believe me. And then he tells him, he says, now can any of you prove me guilty of sin? Well, I wish, yeah, I don't, nobody has ever said that other than Jesus. No one. Not Paul, not Peter, not John, no one. And here Jesus says, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? And of course they couldn't. Now if I'm telling the truth, why didn't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. Watch me. The reason you do not hear is because you do not belong to God. You see, the heart. Satan has taken away. They're hard-hearted, stiff-necked people. They have shut their minds, their ears, their heart to the things of God. And they have allowed to believe Satan and his lies. Just like people do today. They believe Satan and the lies. And they go along with that. And so what happens is, is like Judas, Satan has entered their hearts. Because that's what happened to Judas. It says that Satan entered him. And this is what happens to people as well. They allow the things of Satan to enter into their hearts. So be careful what you allow in your heart and what is there. They listened casually. They paid attention maybe for a while. And then they become preoccupied with other things. And, that's, and then the word, it says, was taken from them, as, it, as Jesus so says in verse 12. The devil comes and takes the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. We have so many that are like that even today. Be careful. Secondly, the shallow soil. In verse 13, what he talks about in verse 6, that some fell on the rocks, and when it came up, the plant withered because there was no moisture. And what's his explanation of that? Those on the rocks are the ones who receive the word with joy, and when they hear it, what happens? But, when they're, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in time of testing, what happens? They fall away. See, this all represents to me the emotional hearers who quickly maybe respond to the message. They hear it, but when times of testing come, they so depart from it. I call these my, I call these the alpha cells of people. Let me show you. You, you know what alpha cells are is. Mm -hmm. I always like to do that. See, Alka-Seltzer does that. You put it in there, boy, and it, boy, look at it. It fizzles up and it does good, right? But that's only going to happen. That's only going to last a little while. And after a while, the fizz goes away. Everything just leaves. And I like to think that's what Jesus talks about when, he, when he's talking about those who come along and they may, you know, enjoy it for a while. And they only last for a short time. And if we say a short time, maybe months, even years. You get people coming in, and they and, and they and here they come, but there's no depth, there's no root, and and they probably never did repent of their sin. They they were caught up in the emotion of the service, maybe the song service, or maybe some people speaking or whatever, but they themselves, their heart was never right. They never repented and never accepted Christ in their hearts and in their lives. 
caught up with everything. As long as there was a song going on or a service going on, entertainment going on, oh, there they were. I mean, I don't know, I've heard different people say, yeah, I'm going to this church, man, we had such a good song service and this and that. I said, what about the word? Well, yeah, we, it's okay, but they're in it just for the, to entertain them. And, and you can see what happens when, it's, when there's nothing there. It's all of a sudden, you know, there's no more fears, there's no more public, there's nothing there, there's no joy, nothing. And what happens is, when they, you know, they, they start out, and then when the sifting comes by Satan, and Satan will sift you, understand, if, you, if you're a child of God, he's going to come along, just like Jesus told Peter, Satan has asked to sift y'all like, like wheat. And not just Peter, but if you read it, it's the other disciples as well. And they did. Times of testing come. And what happens when times of testing comes? With these people, they just fall away. Because there's no root. There's nothing there to help them to uh, when these things come about in their lives. They, they, like, they, they like Christianity. But the problem is, is that it only makes them feel good. See? And there's really no joy or happiness. But when the good times are gone, so are they. And they say, yeah, man. So they're not depending upon God's word to strengthen them, to help them in times of trouble. See, that's the difference with someone who is grounded in the word of God and who's depending upon the word of God as well. You know, the women now are going through the book of James. And James, and you both, the women have already been in it. In James chapter 1, in verse 2 and following, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. He didn't say you wouldn't face it. He said you're going to face trials of many kinds. And he's talking to the believers here. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work. Why? So that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. It's going to come. But when it comes, it helps us to grow. It helps us to be more and more dependent upon God and His strength and His power. And we learn from this. And not only that, we also can help others. Because how can we help someone else if we ourselves do not go through some things as well. And we're able to tell them this is what happened. This is how we can help each other. And we're there to help and to strengthen each other as well. And then over in 1 John, the epistles, epistles of John, as John so writes to the people later on, uh, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18 and 19, and here he as well says this, Dear friends, this is the last hour. And as you've heard, the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. And this is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, that is, the people who were worshiping with them, who were there with them, they went out from us, but did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would, they would have remained with us. But their going show that none of them belong to us. So you see, just like the fizzle has gone, and all you have is colored water or clear water, whatever, so are they. They're gone. Because there was no root. There was nothing there. Because Christ was never in their hearts or in their lives. They really never did accept Christ in their hearts and their lives. It's sad to think that they, they hear, they rejoice with you even. They even say things that make it sound like they're genuine. But then in time, when testing comes and other things happen, they just leave. And you never hear. You often wonder why. Maybe this will help a little bit. The third part, the third people that he talks about in verse 14, as he explains, verse 7, is a, what we call the crowded soil or the thorny soil. As he says, and other seeds fell along the thorns which grew up and which grew up with it and choked the plants. And then in verse 14 he explains it. The seed that fell among the thorns are those who hear 
but they are but they go on their way but as they go on their way they are choked by what life's worries riches and pleasures and what happens they do not mature see what happens what takes place here they have heard again I've mentioned all of them have heard but yet none of them truly allow Christ in their hearts and their lives they have rejected the Word of God they have rejected Jesus as the Messiah he is the word remember in the beginning was the word the word was God the word was God and the word became flesh so we're not just talking about God's word which we are but we're also talking about the word which is Jesus Christ coming into your heart and living there but when the things of the world crowded around them what happens they leave the cares, the pleasures, the riches of life are far more important than the things of God. They did not mature. In other words, they did not grow because they did not feast upon the words of the things of God. You see, what were they concerned about? Money, their career, their popularity, and so forth. They were so occupied with life's cares and pleasures that they really had no time for God and His Word, or even worshiping in God's house. One hour, one hour on Sunday to worship God. All the other time you have to do whatever you want to do. And yet they find even one hour doesn't even come into God's house to worship the one who created them, the one who gave them all that they have, and the one in whom they will stand before when they breathe their last. One hour, forces come into my house and worship me. They do not. Why? Because they're so occupied with life's cares, with life's pleasures. They have no time for God. They have no time for His work. Or maybe, maybe, Maybe his word pricks their heart to where they know, hey, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So I don't want to hear the word of God because it's going against what I'm doing and I know I shouldn't be doing it. So as long as I don't hear it, I'm okay. But the word of God maybe pricks their heart. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's, it, it just interferes with all their interests. Now, it, it seems to be and at times they seem to be interested in God's word, but they're only interested as long as it doesn't interfere with life's cares, businesses, careers, and so forth. Now, I understand you've heard me say it before, there's nothing wrong with being rich, there's nothing wrong with having a career, there's nothing wrong with doing many things, but don't exclude God out of it. It is God who gives us, who gave us all that we have. It's God who supplies everything. It's God who increases our supply as well. Again, it's sad when we see people, they're more concerned with life's cares and what goes on in the world than with the things of God. And you know, when, when I see, and, and people I hear more people when they do it, when they get older and they get into retirement age, and then everything else that they work for, they see somebody else has gotten. And they no longer have it. And now they're concerned and say, wow. They don't see. Hey, you're only going to have it for a short time. And then when all that's gone, what are you going to have left? Absolutely nothing. And because someone else is going to get it. You're only there for a short while. But yet, they're so caught up in the things of the world. And they're too busy, 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 busy with the things of the world as well. Again, from God's word, it warns us, and here in John warns the people as well, as well as us, in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 through 17. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of God is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from 
the world. The world and its desires will pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. What is the will of God? To believe in the one that he has sent. That's the will of God. So you can have those things. You can, you can have a career. You can have money. You can have, you can have other things. But without Christ, it is all worthless without Him. And if He takes second stage to what even you have, then you're still worshiping the things of the world. Be careful. Be careful. Again, what happens when these things happen? You do not mature. You want to mature? Get into the Word of God. They did not mature. And again, the warning from God in uh, 1 Timothy as well, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, here it so relates to us, here as it so says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9 and 10, the Word of God warns us and tells us, people who want to get rich fall into the temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that do what? That plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Again, there's nothing wrong with having it, but don't worship your money or the things that you have or the things that you occupy. Instead, put God first, worship Him. Uh, again, Joshua warned the people, did he not, before he left? As he so said, tell them, for it's me and my house, we will worship the God, we will worship God. You know, get rid, he told them, get rid of all your idols and all the stuff that's hindering you from worshiping God. And I really feel that many people need to do the same thing as well. I think there are many people like unto what Jesus says here, the, the seed fell among the thorns. And it stands for those who hear it, but as they went on their way, they were choked by life's worries and riches and pleasures, and they did not, did not mature. Because all they were worried about was life's, uh, life's things. God will supply. He will help us and be with us as well. Be careful. And then the last thing, the good soil, that is explained here, in verse 8, as he explains it in verse 15, as it says, Still saw the seed fell in the good soil, and it came up and it yielded a crop a hundred times more than it was sown. Here as Jesus explains it, but the seed on the good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retained it, and by persevering produced a fruit. So what's he saying? This soil represents the hearers who also have heard the word, but understand that they understood what the Word said. They acted upon the Word. And this person has truly received it in their hearts. Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. They are, they are saved. And they proved it by what? By producing fruit. Or by producing a crop as well. Now, not everyone produces the same amount of fruit or crop as well. But they will produce a fruit. They will produce a crop. And Matthew's account, as he so relates, and I agree with it, uh, the good soil, as he says in, verse thir in Matthew chapter 13 and in verse 20 23, on the good soil he produced a crop yielding a hundred times, sixty times, thirty times what was sown. So everyone who is truly saved, everyone who truly knows Christ in their heart's mind, what happens is that you're going to produce fruit. Now, it's not going to be the same. You have to, not everyone's going to produce the same amount. Everyone's going to produce differently and do different things as well. And they produce fruit not to gain salvation. I think we made that very clear at Bayou Baptist Church. We are not saved by works. We're saved unto works, to do good works, that Christ has already wants us to do as well. And it says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, he's already, he's already done all of that, so we can do that. Why? So that other people can hear 
the word, hear the gospel, and be saved. So that they too can repent of their sin and come to know Jesus Christ as well. Again, work saves no one. And also, it also identifies that we are believers in Jesus Christ. That we are the one, that we are, and who we are as well. You see, Jesus related in, a, in another place as well as he was sitting on the side of the mountain and a sermon on the mount. And in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, he related to the people how you recognize those who are his and those who are not his. He said, watch out for false prophets. In other words, watch out for false people who do not belong to Jesus Christ or to God. They come in, they come in with, in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. But by their fruits you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes? Absolutely not. Or do they pick figs from thistles? Well, no. Only ginger eats thistles. <laughs> and law. I'm sorry, and law. That's right. That's right. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, and every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and what? Thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize it. You see, by our fruits. In other words, what comes out of our mouth comes from the heart. Those words. And what people hear. When we're not around other believers. And when we're not around other people. When we're there by ourselves. Or we think we're by ourselves. Let me tell you a good thing on that. Don't ever think you're by yourself if you're a believer. You may think you're the only one there, but you're not. Because you see, you forget to look up. God is always there with us. He always hears everything that we say. That could be either good or bad in your, in your case. I don't know. But he hears everything we say. Not only does he hear everything we say, but he also knows our thought and the motive behind what we do as well. Everything. But by their fruits, you will be recognized. He identifies us as the people belonging to Jesus Christ. Not just when we were baptized and we said, okay, I'm a believer because, you see, I'm following Jesus Christ. But after we leave here, do people still identify us as, one, believing and following Jesus Christ? Now, every farmer knows that some seed will be lost. Isn't that right, Mr. Billy? I mean, Mr. Billy was a farmer way back when. And he, a long time ago, I tried, but he still remembers it like it was yesterday. And, it, it, you know, and you know, all the seeds you throw out there, you know none of it, not all of it is going to grow. You're going to lose some of it. But he didn't get discouraged. People don't, farmers don't get discouraged. They just keep on sowing. And we do the same thing. We keep on sowing. Not everybody is going to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Not everyone that we talk to is going to hear. They're going to close their ears to what you say. They're not going to like what you say. Why? Because it interferes with their life. Because they're probably one of these three other types of soil. But understand that as we go about, we're going to, these seeds are going to go on good soil. It's going to go upon people who will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of the Holy Spirit working in their life, and they're going to open their hearts to receive it. Just as they did with Lydia on the riverbanks when Paul preached. And just as so many others as well. And just as, as, God, as Jesus said, God enabled them. Unless God enables you, you will not be able to come. God enabled them. God opened their heart. And they came. So don't get discouraged. You may have setbacks in your own life with things going on. You may even get discouragements from time to time. All of us do. We have enemies everywhere. But what we need to understand is that we will do what God would have us to do so that others can come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and bring glory and honor to God and to show that it is the work of God, not the work of man tell this to people all the time. I am an example of God's grace of what God can do truly. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. 
wife and daughter, they can tell you, I made something of you too. Absolutely not. But God's grace saves us and enables us. <coughs> there was a man back in the 1850s. Well, he was a, he was, he was a, he was a teenager. His name was Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And do you know that this 17-year-old went into a church because it was snowing outside and he wanted, to, he wanted to get warm? So he went into this primitive Methodist church in the 1850s. It was so cold, and it was so, the snow was blowing so much that only maybe a dozen people were there. Not even the preacher came that day. Instead, <coughs> behind the pulpit was a deacon who could not even, didn't have, didn't have the ability to share the word. He was shaking in his feet, had no word at all, and the only thing he spoke that day, the shortest message of all, he turned to Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 22, and he read these words. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. He closed the Bible and he says, may God open your hearts to it or whatever it may be. And that was basically it. That day, Charles Haddon Spurgeon was saved. And he said, because of that verse, because he says, look unto God. And be saved. See, that's where salvation comes <coughs> from God. Such an awesome thing we need to understand concerning all things. In closing, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8 through 12, here it relates to us. We are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. Perplexed, but not despaired. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We will always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus, so that why the life of Jesus may be revealed in our bodies. But we, for we are all alive, for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life may be revealed in our mortal bodies. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. See, we are the revelation to other people of what God is doing through Jesus Christ today. No matter what goes on. And you may think, well, I may not be doing anything. Sure you are. It may be somebody next to you. It may be somebody who is looking at you. Whatever. You may say, I may not have many gifts. Yes, you do. Every, every believer, I'm convinced of it, every believer has at least one gift. And not all of us have the same gift. Or maybe more than one gift. And it's there to give glory and honor to God, but it's also to reveal Christ in your life by showing indeed that you are. Maybe it's just greeting people when they come in. Or maybe it's doing other things as well. Who knows? Or whatever, God, whatever it is, it's to bring glory and honor to God, but it's also producing fruit. It's producing a crop. And so the way to do it is this. Hear what God is saying. Understand his word and act upon it. Allow Christ to come into your heart, into your life. Repent of your sin and turn to Him. And He, He, not you, He will enable you to do many things. But first and foremost, it's the heart. Does Christ live in your heart and your life? I pray today that He does. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come now at this time, Lord. If there's any to whom you have spoken to during this time in which we have had your word, if there's any, I pray that at this time they will come and make it public and let others know that indeed today that Christ has come into their heart and their life and they're making it public again to reveal what you are doing in their life and in their heart. And I pray if there's any here today, they may come unto you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to him number 295. If God has spoken to you today, let us sing near to the heart of God.
I pray that God His Word has spoken to all of us. I pray also that each and every one of you do have the Word of God in your heart. And that you can give His Word to other people as well. Be there for others and let others know, indeed, the Word of God. So that they too can come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Pray for the many who do not know. And pray for every believer as well. For strength, for guidance, and for help as we journey in this life as well. May God bless and be with each and every one. Again, do remember the ladies have Bible study Wednesday night, 6.30. All the ladies are welcome to come and join in in the kitchen where there is uh, social distancing, so to speak, uh, that they do have and it takes place and they have a good time of fellowship as well as getting into God's Word. If not, we invite you to come back next week and join us again uh, as we look into the Word of God and worship and praise God. And for those who have little ones, if you'd like to bring them into the little church back in the back, you can do that as well at 1030 on Sunday mornings as well. May God bless and be with each and every one. Al, lead us in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you. Thank you all that you've done for us. Thank you, Father, for being with us each and every second, every minute, every hour of each and every day. I thank you for your word, and I pray, Lord, the seed that has been spread in here will we'll catch and will produce faith. Pray, Father, we just thank you again for what you've done for us and ask you to be with us they will leave to the time and go our separate ways. Bless, watch over us. In our son's precious name we pray.